Los Angeles in the 1970s. Big hair, big cars, and even bigger dreams made Los Angeles the place to be. A place where you could buy a home, raise a family, and live out the California dream. A lot can change in 50 years. Some of it for the better, others, well, not so much. In just a few short decades, we saw the promise of the California dream slip further and further out of reach. Our once state-of-the-art freeway system began to crumble. Over half of our county hospitals have been forced to close their doors. And in per-student spending, a key marker of a well-funded public education system, California dropped to a dismal 46th in the nation. So how did California, home to the fifth largest economy in the world, see our public services become so woefully underfunded? In 1978, California voters passed Proposition 13, which locked in property tax rates at 1976 levels and set a cap on annual tax increases. It also prohibited reassessing your tax rate for as long as you lived in your house, ensuring that even as your property value increased, you wouldn't risk being priced out of your home. Proposition 13 was a hit for homeowners, but unfortunately, it carried with it some unintended consequences. While Prop 13 froze property taxes for hardworking homeowners, it also extended those same protections to the state's wealthiest corporations. Now corporate giants like Disney and Shell were able to avoid paying their fair share for public services, depriving our state of vital funding for schools, hospitals, health clinics, libraries, parks, and first responders. All told, we're missing out on over $12 billion in revenue per year. Money that should be going directly into classrooms, emergency rooms, and toward funding vital public services across the state. And we've seen this chronic underfunding wreak havoc on our communities. Skyrocketing wait times at hospitals and clinics. Severe overcrowding in our classrooms. Bridges, roads, and infrastructure in disrepair. At the same time, CEOs at the largest California companies have seen unprecedented windfalls. Thanks in large part to higher prices and lower taxes. As a result, hardworking Californians like you and me are being forced to pick up the tab, paying more and more for less, as giant companies game the system to pad their pockets. Schools and Communities First levels that playing field. Schools and Communities First closes the loopholes corporate giants have used to avoid paying their fair share and will bring in over $12 billion in much-needed funds for public schools and vital community services, all while keeping the same property tax protections for homeowners. So how do we make schools and communities first a reality? Speak with your friends and neighbors about leveling the playing field for working families. Volunteer to get the word out in your community. Vote for Schools and Communities First on the November ballot. Together, we will show wealthy corporations that our communities matter.